Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Shop Talk 23. I'm your host, Robert O'Brien, and I'll be here with you for the duration. My special guest this morning is Jeff Jewett of Homestead Finishing Products. If you have questions, he's got answers. He is the finishing expert, and that's why I have him on the Shop Talk live streams as often as possible. So grab yourself a cup of coffee. I've got mine here from compliments of the Acoustic Coffee Company. And I certainly appreciate them uh, sending me some coffee this morning. By the way, if you ever want a freebie from the Acoustic Coffee Company, there's your coupon code right there. And you'll get uh, a free bag of coffee with the purchase of a couple 12-ounce bags on your first order there. Just use Robbie-O as the coupon code, and they'll hook you up with some, uh, some wonderful coffee. Now, a few announcements this morning. First of all, thank you to Jim Deeming. Uh, jimsguitar.com. He's the one that does my theme music. He's done some uh, theme music in some of my uh, online courses as well. Fantastic finger picker, and he is a, a wonderful guitar player, a wonderful individual. So if you're interested in Chet Atkins kind of stuff and finger picking and stuff, Jeff or Jim's your guy, and uh, go over to his website, jimsguitar.com. Also, we're going to have a drawing today like we usually do. Make sure that you uh, click on the link at the top of the chat box there, and Cesar, my web developer all the way down there in Brazil, is going to do a drawing here in a little bit for one of Jeff's courses, and so make sure you enter your name, your email address to get that done. Also, be sure you put in the uh, chat box there where you're from. I always enjoy hearing where people are from. I go back and watch the stream after the fact, see if I missed any questions, things like that. So make sure that you put there, because I, I really enjoy seeing how far of a reach we have here. And this thing goes out all over the world, not only just with the people that are watching now, but after the fact as well. It's got a long shelf life. So thank you, everybody. I, I noticed that Bo is there. Bo is way out there in Grand Junction, Colorado, which is about three and a half hours uh, west of me. And look at that. He says it's two of his favorite luthiers. And he sent me a picture this morning on text. I just want to show it to you folks here. Look at that. He is glued to that TV screen or that computer screen there. He is ready to go. He's got himself a cup of Java there. So thank you for tuning in, Bo, way out there in Grand Junction. Certainly appreciate it. And let's just see who else is tuned in here. Manuela, all the way down there in Sao Paulo. Manuela is usually with Cesar. They're helping us doing the drawing. Uh, Cesar lives in uh, the interior of the state of Sao Paulo. He's in Cirquillo, which is a couple hours uh, uh, out of Sao Paulo, the city. And Manuela, who is usually with him helping doing the drawings, is apparently in Sao Paulo doing, taking care of some business there. So we're going to miss you today, Manuela. Drew Boyd there, all the way from Cincinnati. Drew Boyd is on the... Uh, uh, Advisory Committee for the Luthery Academy. So thank you, Drew, for tuning in. Certainly appreciate that. Steve Foss from Longmont, Colorado. Look at that. Greetings from Havana, Florida. My God. Thank you, folks, for tuning in. I certainly appreciate it. And I'm going to try not to waste your time here. Look at that. Somebody's already put me a problem, a question. A cracking spruce, acoustic top, has a darker color in the center. Well, we'll see if we can get to that question here a little bit. All right, let's get back to some more announcements here. And if you have any questions about uh, finishing, go ahead and get those in the chat box there. I'll try and get to them as I can. I've got a list of questions here that people have sent me uh, prior to the broadcast this morning. So if you uh, if you want to you know, have a certain problem or issue you want to address, then go ahead and get that in the chat box. We'll try and get to it. Uh, another announcement. Uh, in honor of this broadcast, and also uh, Jeff and I are going to be at the Mark Adams School of Woodworking uh, next week teaching a class together. In honor of that, and to say thank you for your time, we're offering a 10% off on Jeff's online urethane finishing course. It's on the lutheryacademy.com website. Uh, just scroll down, you find the finishing courses, and the urethane course is going to be 10% off. All you need to do is use the promo code Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, and that will be available for the next two weeks. That is because some people don't watch the broadcast until next week. They can watch it after the fact. By the way, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel that uh, has all of the past Shop Talk live streams. So if you're interested in binge watching or going and picking up some of those last uh, ones that you have not seen, go over to the... Uh, uh, O'Brien Guitars website or on my YouTube channel and just find the playlist there for 
uh, Shop Talk live streams. All right, a few more uh, announcements real quick, and we'll just jump right into it. I'll bring uh, Jeff on screen here. Uh, LMI is having an inlay blowout sale, 30% off while supplies last. I also got an email yesterday. They're having 20% off electric guitar building tops while uh, supplies last there as well. So if you're into those things, go ahead and uh, hit up LMI on their website. The Vancouver Guitar Festival is coming up September 24th and 25th up there in Vancouver. So if uh, you're up in that area or want to make the trip, uh, that's a great show to go to. Also, the California Guitar Festival in San Luis Obispo is happening this weekend, September 16th, 17th, and 18th. Another fine show to go to. Uh, I mentioned that Jeff and I are going to be at the Mark Adams School of Woodworking. That is coming up uh, next week. Uh, I'm flying out here on Sunday, and Jeff's going to meet me there. And we have five days to finish 16 guitars. <laughs> you heard that right. We are going to do it. We're going to use a catalyzed product, which hopefully I can get Jeff to talk about here in a few more minutes that will allow us to do that, because that's a very short cure time. So we have to use some type of catalyzed product. And uh, I remember seeing a question about catalyzed products here, so we'll pop that to Jeff here in a little bit. Also, the following weekend, uh, September 24th and 25th, I will be teaching a weekend French polish class at the Mark Adams School of Woodworking. There are still some spaces available for that, so if you're interested, go ahead and sign up. There are no more spaces available for the urethane finishing class that Jeff Argo will be doing. That one's been full for a long time. However, the good news is next year in the month of July, we will be doing it again. So if you missed out this year, go ahead and sign up for next year. All right, I always uh, like to uh, call attention to my website. Let's go take a quick look there at the website. There it is, the Luthreacademy.com is the website. And you'll notice that I have a new course that came out, the Six Day Acoustic Guitar Building course, been out for a few weeks, and people are enjoying that. So if you're interested in learning how I build a guitar in six days, that's the course. You'll also notice that coming soon for the Falcate Bracing course with Luthier uh, in uh, Australia, Trevor Gore, he invented that bracing pattern. It looks very complex, but it's actually not that hard to execute with the right instruction. So he's going to be showing how to do that. And I think that course, if I remember correctly, is scheduled to come out on the 26th of this month, if I, if I remember correctly. Also, let's just take a quick look at the uh, sponsors page. I always like to call attention to the sponsors there and say thank you very much for them. They help keep the lights on here at O'Brien Guitars, and they also make our lives as luthiers a lot easier. So consider purchasing their products or services and I think it'll make your life a lot easier too. Okay, I think without any further ado, we need to uh, bring Jeff on. Let me just take a quick look here at the uh, chat box, make sure we got no questions coming up. Oh, we do have some questions. Look at that. Okay, greetings from Los Angeles, Fort Lauderdale, Victoria, British Columbia. My God. Okay, let's go ahead and bring Jeff on. Let me see if I can find the right button to push here. Where is Jeff? There he is. He's down there waiting for us. All right, here comes Jeff. All right, how about a nice round of applause for Jeff Jewett, Homestead Finishing. Oh, come on, folks. Let's do a little bit better than that. There we go. That's what I like to hear. How are you doing this morning, Jeff? I'm good, although I'm uh, pixelated to the nth degree, but uh, we just have to live with a crappy laptop. laptop camera at this point but yeah it's good the weather has changed in Cleveland thankfully we have been between 70 and 85 percent relative humidity for about the past four weeks wow so that really puts a danger on your ability to build guitars so you can only make so many bridges and necks and god knows what in four weeks so but we're finally yeah, back and, into and the swing of things. How about finishing guitars? I mean, that that amount of humidity probably causes problems with your finishing schedule too, huh? Catalyzed urethane doesn't have uh, the persnickety problems or the temperamental problems with weather that lacquer and shellac and other finishes have. Right. Um, plus, the, the real benefit of the catalyzed product that I use is that, like the automotive industry they make different thinners mm -hmm. for different weather patterns so right. you have a slow thinner you have a fast thinner and you have a medium thinner 
Uh, for instance, when we go to Mark Adams next week, if the humidity is up there and, you know, it's hot, we may have to add a little bit of retarder. But uh, that's what's nice about the finish. But it, I've never had a catalyzed urethane finish blush on me. Not once. Right. And I haven't we either. Sprayed, uh, we've, we sprayed from 20% humidity to 95 around yeah. here. Never had it happen. Yeah. It's, it's so, not as uh, temperamental as the lacquer, things I it? really like about the Pardon me? I said it's not as temperamental as lacquer. I used to spray the catalyzed urethane in it Brazil. Not, it's no, 100% humidity no, there. No. Never had a problem. No, it's, it's definitely not as temperamental. Uh, and um, there's a lot of other good things which we can talk about uh, in a little bit. But uh, I, I, I started using it about, I want to say, eight years ago. And I really have only done a couple lacquer finishes since then. And right. uh, it, it's, it's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, oh, just, uh, you know, I, I even got Bo Hannum to uh, start using catalyzed urethane there a couple you go. years ago. Yeah, you've corrupted Bo. <laughs> um, one of the well, questions that wasn't that, an easy thing to do. <laughs> one of the questions that somebody has sent me here on the list has to do with the terminology catalyzed. Can you give a, a, a brief uh, explanation of what the heck does catalyzed finish mean? And in our course next week, we're going to be using catalyzed urethane. So, what does the word catalyzed mean? Well, in its most simplistic sense, uh, it just means that it's um, usually a two or more component uh, finish or top coat that you have to mix together prior to using. Mm -hmm. And the catalyst component uh, can be referred to a couple of different ways. But um, in a strict chemical sense, it's just a, 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 a two different components of a finish that react with each other. And the result is that it forms a new molecule, which is your either your urethane or in other cases, it could be uh, uh, something else. Um, so catalyzed typically means more than one part to the finish. Okay. Um, in another example of a, a catalyzed finish or a catalyzed finish, epoxy is a is a type of catalyzed um, uh, adhesive, if you want to call it that. Right. Although it's also used as a finish, so really that that's what it means. And right. um, the, the reason, um, the oh, reason after the reason spring nitro, like the... nineteen years, urethane is really nice. And, <laughs> go ahead. Go the ahead. reason why I like the catalyze uh, aspect of this product is, you know, like I said, we have to finish 16 guitars in five days. And the only product that would allow us to do that is a catalyzed yes. product because it really cuts down on the cure time. Those two components you mentioned that are mixed together, the re chemical reaction, the reaction speeds up that cure time tremendously. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I've used catalyzed lacquers and things before, too. I, do you like them or are you partial to your thing? Um, I, I'm partial to the urethane more because of the durability aspect and uh, also the fact that once it cures, uh, which is, you know, fairly quickly, there's very little smell to it. Uh, so you just don't have that kind of lacquery, lacquer, thinner smell hanging around. Right. Um, now, that said, it, it, it is a, a little bit more hazardous in um, mixing it. And some other things you have to be very careful. There's there's some co components which you know are, are a little bit more hazardous than lacquer. But if you use the right protective equipment and can vent the overspray out, it's good. But one thing I noticed right away is you just don't even in my big shop with a good spray booth, I, you just don't walk in the office and smell like somebody's been spraying lacquer all day. Right. You don't. Right. Nobody smells it. Right. Um, we've got a couple of questions here. Why don't we just get after one of these things? What do you think? Sure, not a problem. All right, here's one from Kenneth. What are your three or your top three guitar spray finishes for a newbie spray finisher? So apparently he doesn't have a lot of uh, experience spraying finish. Can you recommend something for a newbie that would give him some good results? Well, really, the the, the easiest and the least problematic for a first-time finisher, I would recommend lacquer, nitrocellulose lacquer. Okay. Uh, some of the top ones that I like, I, I'm very partial to Cardinal. 
uh, lacquer. Uh, I think they have a product that's called Luthier Lac. Mm -hmm. um, other ones are the Color Tone Lacquer from Stumac is really good. Uh, that's made by Mohawk, quite frankly. Right. Uh, and then if you want to stick with Mohawk, their finish is called Classic Instrument Lacquer. Right. Um, I would start with those and then see, you know, that will allow you to kind of refine your spray pe technique. And if you make a mistake, it's really easy to correct it with lacquer. Um, and they're fairly easy to buff out and things like that. And then once you get your kind of feet wet with that, then you can look at using one of the urethanes. Mm -hmm. Or if your shop environment doesn't allow solvent-based there's a lot of good water-based finishes out there. Uh, the two that I'm very partial to are, um, there's a general finishes product called Endurovar, which mm -hmm. I like. Mm -hmm. uh, but quite frankly, I, I would probably uh, 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 cut my teeth on a Target Coatings product called Entex 6000, yes. which I believe is now being carried by LMI. Yes, um, I believe LMI really carries that. Kind of yeah. helped. I don't know uh, if they carry the Endurovar or not. Yeah, we kind of facilitated that. Yeah. And that was one of the They're questions. looking at it. I, I, I think they're still in. The, go ahead. That, that was one of the questions here on, on that somebody so, said um, about water-based finishes. Are you a fan of water-based? And if so, what, what would you recommend? And you, and you just covered that great with uh, Endurovar. So thanks for covering that. I can't spray water-based finishes in my shop. Uh, I don't know if people follow me on Instagram or whatever, but my big problem is because we manufacture the Transtint product in the same facility where my spray booth and guitar shop uh, uh, production stuff is, uh, there's a certain amount of airborne dye that's always in the air. And when you use it, it's water soluble. And when you spray a spruce soundboard, you'll get red, green, blue, purple dots on it that will like appear. Right. So uh, assuming most customers don't like that, uh, we really can't <laughs> spray it. Um, I have sprayed water-based products here. Um, the Enduro VAR is fine. Amtec is fine. Um, there's really no difference in spraying any of those three finishes, water-based, urethane, or lacquer. Other than uh, you do have to, the right recoat window time, uh, you may have to sand it the next day if required and things like that, which is usually covered in the instructions or whatever. Right. All right. I got a, another question here. This looks more like a surface prep question than anything else. It says uh, a crack in the spruce acoustic top that has a dark, uh, darker color in the center it has already been glued and has some type of top coat, which looks okay, but. How do I how do I make that dark line lighter? I've heard of people making, for example, if you do a restoration, the the older wood is darker than the lighter wood, and you can you can chemically treat the lighter wood to make it dark. Going the opposite way is kind of a problem. You got any suggestions there, Jeff? Um, it's near impossible to make something that's dark go lighter, particularly on a spruce soundboard where you have two issues going with you in terms of matching the color. Number one is the color is very light. You know, it, it's very, you, you have to basically, to make dark light, you're gonna have to use some sort of a pigmented product uh, to cover that up. The other issue is that you'll have Usually, if you look at most soundboard tops, if you look at them from different angles, one side is dark and one side is light because of the grain reversal or the grain reversing direction. A perfectly quarter sawn top usually does that less. But anyways, so what happens is you, you will match that line, if you will, from one direction, and then you go to the opposite side of the guitar, and then it looks totally different. Right. My answer to stuff like that is always the same. And it's uh, basically, it's called a sunburst. Uh, <laughs> a sunburst can fix just about anything. And my personal feeling is that's why sunbursts were invented in the first place. Right. 
uh, way back in the 20s by Gibson. Uh, they probably had some really, you know, not so good soundboards or something like that. And some finishing guru came up with the idea, hey, let's hide it. There so, you go. There's the that works. The, that's, that's just my opinion. But uh, All right. Uh, uh, here's a, so, here's a, yeah, it, go ahead. Here's another question on the sealing the inside of the guitar. I get this question a lot. You know, hey, should I seal the inside of my guitar? Should I finish the inside of my guitar? I generally say no. And here's my reasons. Uh, I do a lot of French polish in my, in my shop. So you can't French polish the inside around all those braces and crevices and stuff. It doesn't look good. You could spray it. You could brush it. Uh, you could pat it. You could do other ways to apply that, that finish. However, in my opinion, if you ever have a repair that needs to be done, now you've got an adhesion issue with cleats and things like that, or if you have a brace come loose. Uh, also, uh, with an unfinished guitar, if you get a little dust in there, it doesn't really show. With a finished guitar, you get one speck of dust in there, and it really shows bad. So here comes the question, Jeff. Let's see what your, what your opinion is on this. Thoughts on sealing the inside of the box. Pros, cons, several issues with cracking. Guitars I've built with in sealed inside have never had an issue. What's your opinion on that, Jeff? Um, I've experienced issues with back cracking on several of my guitars that I've built over the past five years. And I started finishing the insides of my guitars three years ago, maybe two and a half. I've not had an issue since then. Okay. My take on it is in regards to the, uh, adhesion issue with future repairs. Um, basically, any good repair person would have to clean that area and make sure that it's um, going to be, you know, a good glue joint. Uh, so I, I don't think that's a real issue. Um, plus, if you use shellac, and I've tried using lacquer on the inside, it doesn't work. Uh, it has a residual smell that just stays forever. Uh, okay. I, I would not recommend using a finish other than shellac. Uh, the two issues with shellac that I had initially were the, it was a little bit too glossy for me. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you how I got around that. And then the other issue was I was afraid of like the label sticking to it or something like that. So I used to mask off around where I was going to put the label. Right. Well, I did a couple of tests here and I found out that fish glue on a label sticks just fine to shellac. I mean, there's okay. just no problem, no problem whatsoever. I've not tried other glues, but fish glue works. And that's kind of what I use uh, for label. Um, the other issue was the glossiness of it. I got around that by using a flatting compound or a flatting paste right. proprietary product that I made many, many years ago, uh, uh, in response to requests from uh, the museum conservation industry. They wanted a uh, liquid flatting agent to degloss shellac so when they touched up old furniture, it wouldn't stick out. So we used to sell that product. We don't anymore. But you can use, I've heard of people using talcum powder okay. in the uh, shellac to degloss it. Mm -hmm. uh, it works. I've tried it. it, it it's worked on some tests I've done. Right. Um, the other Thing that you can do is you can just rub it with some steel wool or some scotch bright and you can degloss it that way right. i mean that now i really like it um i think it adds uh, a tidiness a clean appearance to the inside of the instrument and the uh i use a, a, a shellac that has a little bit of a satiny look I, I just i just like the way it looks Okay. It also does, if you do get a lot of buildup of dust and stuff or debris in the guitar over time, it doesn't make it a lot easier to clean that stuff out. You just blow it out. And oh, okay. it. So I've been doing it now for two, two and a half years, and I do every instrument that way unless, and we just had this happen, we have a customer that doesn't want it done. Mm -hmm. This guy was uh, convinced that it would kill the tone. And I tried to tell him, in my experience, it does not. But, you know, customer, you know, that's what he wants. That's what he wants. Yeah. Now, you should also know uh, that, um, as far as I know, just about every top boutique luthier in this country and abroad finishes the inside of their instruments. Okay. So, 
except for uh, I, apparently not not except for right. me. Except for me. <laughs> how, I know Bo does. Well, maybe I'll change my mind on that. I have done it before. I, I've just not recently. Oh, one 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 word of warning though. Okay, if you're dealing with any of the rosewoods, uh, that's Indian, Cocobolo, Honduran as well as maybe any other tropicals, do not brush it. What will happen is the alcohol in the finish will re-dissolve all that pigment and color, and it will go all over your braces. And I've never had that happen to me, but I did have a friend that happened to one time. <laughs> I had a friend that happened to once, too. Uh, so, uh, spray it. You know what works really well? My friend um, um, Michael Bashkin does this. Those little aerosol cans of Zinzer work just fine. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do it. Let's do one more question. Then how about a giveaway? Let's get Cesar uh, right. on the on deck circle down there in Brazil, get ready for a drawing. Here comes a quick question. Uh, Jeff, I use Mohawk instrument nitrocellulose lacquer. It's always a problem getting their lacquer reducer. Is it possible to use a lacquer thinner that the big box stores sell? That's a great question. What's your opinion, Jeff? Um, I am uh, aware of the fact that it's not only expensive, but, you know, it, it, it is a problem to get the lacquer reducer. Um, Mohawk lacquer reducer is a really funny formulation. Um, it's very different from the old conventional lacquer thinners that had a fair amount of toluene, or xylene, methyl, ethyl, ketone, and some of those other stuff in it. Um, my good friend TJ Thompson had a problem with it uh, not too long ago. And what I have always found is Ace Hardware sells a lacquer thinner that should be compatible with the Mohawk product. It should be. Uh, that's just the last time I checked. Uh, I uh, would avoid probably the big box stores like Sunnyside. I mean, like, uh, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's and all that, because lacquer thinners um, that are sold in the big box stores, they, they sometimes are for, for other uses, like cleanup and things like that. So there may be a lot of recycled solvents in them or not so good. Um, I'd have to revisit some of the MSDSs to look at it, but Ace Hardware should be a good bet. Okay. Uh, buy a quarter of it and see. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Perfect. All right, Jeff, I'm going to take you off the screen just for a minute, and I'm going to bring Cesar all the way down there in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I'm going to bring him on, and we'll do a quick uh, quick giveaway. You got a course you want to give away? I was thinking maybe the uh, urethane course. What do you think? Yep. Okay. I'll be back to you here in just a few, Jeff. Don't go anywhere. I won't go anywhere. All right, here we go with Cesar. There is Cesar, oh. all the way down there in Sao Paulo, Brazil. How are you today, Cesar? I'm good. I'm missing Manuela, but yeah, oh. Manuela, <laughs> she's a fixture on this uh, live stream now. She's yes. not here with us today. Oh well. Exactly. So, how many people have entered for the drawing? So we have 38 people today. Okay. All right. And we have 47 people watching. So maybe someone forgot to leave their entry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready for the drawing? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So we are giving away the urethane course, right? Your urethane course. Here's our random number generator there on the iPad. Oh, it's a little off screen there. Cesar. There we go. Oh. And let's see. Our random number generator today is number 17. And number let's 17. see. I think so I can bring up maybe. your screen here. Let me see if I can bring up the screen. And we'll see. Uh, yep. All right. Number 17 is just Charles. I, I don't have, Charles. I have the email, but I won't show it. So yeah. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, Charles. Thank you very much, Charles. <laughs> you are the lucky winner. Let's see if I can get you off the screen now to get Cesar back on. Oh, look at that. Let's see if I can get me back on. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Cesar, you will be in contact with Charles and, yes. uh, Congratulations, Charles, for winning uh, Jeff Jewett's urethane course. If you're not a winner today, everybody's always a winner here on the Shop Talk live streams. If you're not a winner, uh, then you can use the 10% off uh, coupon promo code that we've put there in the chat box. Just use the promo code Jeff at checkout on the lutheracademy.com website. 
and you can get the urethane course. If you're going to be in our class next week, you're going to be able to see that live. We'll show you how to do it live. All right. Thank you, Cesar. We'll be back to you here in a little while. There is just, just a quick note. There is someone asking, how do you enter? There is a, a little link at the top of the chat box. So just follow that link and that's it. Yeah. You can leave your entry. Yep. So all you need is Thank just you, a name uh, and an email address. Name and email, yes. All right. Thank you, Cesar. We'll be back here in a few minutes. See you. All right. Well, let's see if Jeff Jewett's still here. He's just gone out for lunch. Let's see. There he is. Look at that. Oh, he's got oh. his Dan Earl <laughs> uh, magnifiers on. Look at that. Shoot, I think that deserves a little bit of applause. What do you think, huh? There you go. <laughs> All right, let's see. We've got another question here for you. Um, this one, oh, it's a Taylor guitar. Look at that. And my son has a Taylor guitar, and the top is sticky. How can I correct this? Well, I know probably why it's sticky, but how would you think you would correct it uh, there, Jeff? If it's a recently made uh, Taylor guitar, it should not be sticky uh, because they use a UV cured finish, as far as I know, yep. in the States, uh, Mexico. I'm not sure what the factory down there is using, but I'm sure it's uh, UV cure as well. Yeah. If your son has a Taylor guitar that's sticky, uh, if it's an old one from maybe 20, 25 years ago, it may be one that uh, was one of their original UV cured um, finishes that uh, they had problems with. Uh, the only way you can find an answer to that is to uh, do the following. The first thing I would do is I would find naphtha if you can find it. Um, if you can't find it in your state, a good substitute is charcoal lighter or mineral spirits. And I would take a rag and wet the uh, rag with the naphtha, and I would wipe that instrument down as, as well as you can. Uh, if you use a microfiber cloth, you'll get rid of uh, possibly any sticky dirt and grime. Uh, a buildup uh, from our hands, as well as sweat and all that, can create a sticky finish over time if you don't take care of it. But if it is an older finish, uh, the only secu uh, way to uh, uh, work that is to refinish it or possibly um, um, I would, you know, I, I find Taylor customer service to be pretty good. If you send them the serial number, they might be able to help you out on that. But um, usually a sticky finish on a brand new guitar like that uh, would be usually some sort of a, a, a buildup of something. But go ahead. I, if you have an alternate uh, answer there, Robbie, I don't know. Well, I... I, I... Probably if it were a catalyzed finish, which is it's probably not because Taylor uses the UV cured, uh, the finish didn't cure. The catalyst didn't work properly. Or, like you said, if it's one of those old, old finishes, uh, perhaps it's reacting with something. Uh, I do know that the old nitro finishes react with, uh, you know, bug spray and, you know, mosquito repellent kind of stuff. And yeah. those will soften a finish. So, yeah, I'd definitely try and get to the bottom of it because yeah, nobody likes playing a sticky guitar, right? <laughs> Well, no, but uh, you'd be surprised how much um, improvement you can get just by good and giving it a good cleaning, yeah. basically. All right. Here comes a question from uh, Charles. I want to stain the guitar back and sides that have wood inlays. What is the best method for pre preventing the stain from discoloring the inlays? Now, these are wood inlays, not mother of pearl or abalone, so that, that makes a difference. That's kind of a tough one. Um, there's one or two approaches to it that you could try. Uh, the first approach that's been used for years and years and years is if you're hand applying the stain is to take an artist brush and to mask off those inlays by in painting it with a two pound cut of shellac. And you would have to use several coats of that to really properly mask that off. I find that really hard to do, uh, particularly if the inlay is like stringing or like purfling or something like that, very, very thin. Um, I am better off taping off the inlays with some sort of a tape. And the way that you do this is, or that I would do it, is I would seal the wood first to get a good base coat of sealer on there, sand it, get the wood nice and smooth, and then use tape to tape off the where you don't want color and then spray your color on 
uh, using, you know, some of the techniques I outline in my sunburst finishing course, or basically you just put colorant like trans tint or color tone in your lacquer or your finish and spray the color on. That's the way that I would do it. Okay. It's still, it's always a problem. Inlays and color or color in general, where you don't want it, it usually winds up. It's a problem. Uh, I usually find that if you, if you are wiping the color on, even if you do the best job of taping it or sealing it, you're going to get color bleed somewhere. So the tape is the uh, uh, best method with spray. That probably happened to a friend of yours one time, huh, Jeff? Uh, uh, yeah, just once, once or twice, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> here comes a question from Steve Foss. Steve Foss is a former student yeah. of mine when I used to teach back at the university here. Uh, he says, I don't have a spray booth. Robbie and Jeff, please talk about how you spray a guitar without a spray booth. Uh, I'll let you go first, Jeff. In fact, if I remember correctly, you have some type of material somewhere on the Internet that shows how to do a, a knockdown spray booth or a temporary type spray booth. I, I outline how to do a knockdown spray booth in my book that's called Spray Finishing Made Simple, mm -hmm. uh, which is available. It was published by the Taunton Press, uh, which does fine woodworking magazine. That is available um, just about anywhere, and it's not expensive. You get a DVD and a book with it. Um, you can make a fairly inexpensive uh, knockdown booth with just a box fan, a window fan. Mm -hmm. and some sort of enclosure with it and set it up within your garage and, you know, just point everything out, you know, towards the, uh, you know, the, uh, the overhead door. Uh, another way of doing it, if you want to be really cheap, is just to get a big space like uh, that has like a, a, some, you know, kind of an overhead door or a door or an opening. Put a fan behind you and then spray and then the fan will blow all the overspray out the window. I would tend to uh, favor a water-based finish if I were doing that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, you can use other finishes if you want. Yeah. One of the key things that Jeff said here is do it in your garage. Don't do it in your basement yeah. near your hot water heater or your furnace because the pilot lights and, and ignition sources in there. We don't need to contact our insurance companies about that because that technical term for that is bad. Now, my experience okay. with spraying without a booth. I learned how to spray when I lived in Brazil. And I was used to seeing these old car guys that would restore old Volkswagen Beetles and things like that. They would just roll these things out of their garage out into the open of the daylight and spray them. And they were some of the, the most professional finishes I believe I've ever seen. So I know it's possible to do it without a spray booth. There is There are some things you need to worry about. Uh, I got real spoiled when I was wor working at the university here teaching a, a literary course. Did that for 10 years. And they had a professional spray booth set up, and it was great. When I left them, I no longer had access to that. So I'm now using the spray booth in my backyard. <laughs> and what I do is I wait until the neighbors on each side of me are having a barbecue, and there's a crosswind, and I blow all the fumes over to there towards their barbecue grill. No, I'm kidding. You don't want to yeah. do that. Um, I have not had a problem. Uh, well, let me take that back. I have had some, uh, some episodes. For example, one time I was spraying a guitar. I got all done. I'm admiring it wow, this is beautiful. It laid down beautiful and a moth flew into it and rolled down the back of the guitar. That was yep. a problem. Another issue yep. I had was it was on a fall day and I was admiring the guitar. I just sprayed it and the wind picked up just enough to bring a whole bunch of little leaves into the back of the guitar. Yep. Uh, so there are problems like that. Uh, just be careful. Uh, spray upwind, you know, and let the overspray go away from you. I do wear a mask, respirator, all that kind of stuff. Also, uh, temperature. I have not had much of a problem with temperature here in Colorado. I, uh, I, you know, I I keep the guitar in my shop and the spray product in my shop until it's time to spray. I walk outside, I quickly spray it, I pull it inside my garage, hang it up. I've sprayed at 35, 40 degrees, never had a problem. I've sprayed at 100 degrees, never had a problem. But those are things you want to look out for. You're opening yourself up for potential uh, issues without a booth. However, you can always have issues with booths as well. So... That's my take on it. Anything yeah, else? it's um, th there's a couple of uh, uh, I think I've seen videos of there's some like, you know, portable, like almost tents yeah. that you can mm -hmm. set up in your backyard. They look like the old pup tents we used to mm -hmm. camp, camp in. Yep. Uh, you've got those available, I think, in Rockler. Um, the big uh, issue with spraying outside is you want to avoid uh, w once you get done finishing it, don't leave it outside to right. dry or off gas 
particularly in the hot sun yep. or, you know, uh, where there's going to be debris flowing around, get it inside and, you know, covered or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it, you can do it. it. It's not a big deal. As long as you don't like, you know, uh, uh, tick off the neighbors, you know, you, you can do anything you want in your own home. Yeah. Just don't blow yourself up or poison yourself. Technical term yeah, for that's exactly. that. Right. <laughs> Here's a little a comment from Bo out there in Grand Junction. After spraying nitro for 19 years, urethane is really <laughs> nice and I'm sticking with it. No pun intended there, huh, Bo? <laughs> Um, well, I first got to tell you, cars. he was a little bit of a hard nut to convert. Um, <laughs> uh, he, um, well, um, yeah, it, it took a while to convert Bo, but I, I think uh, once he sprayed uh, his first round and then he sanded it, he just, he was a convert after that. Because yeah. there's, if there's one thing about a urethane finish is that when you go to sand it, it sands like drywall compound. Yep. It is just the easiest finish to sand. And you can actually, and we'll be doing this in the class, we'll be using dry abrasives to do the entire leveling, sanding, and buff system. Uh, we won't use, we won't wet sand at all. Yep. And that, to me, is a big benefit because I hated wet sanding. I, yep. I really did, didn't like it. It's tough on your hands, your skin. Plus, you can't see what you're doing because yep. of the, the the liquid on the on the guitar. You could be rubbing through a binding and not even know it. So yep. there's a lot of things go, uh, going for it. All right. Here comes a question from Al. I believe Al's up there in New York. Uh, does my HVLP gun need to be modified to use catalyzed urethane? That's a great question. It is a great question. Uh, no, it does not. Uh, in fact, I use the same gun. I'll go back and forth if I have to between lacquer and mm -hmm. catalyzed urethane. Uh, the thinners uh, are a little bit different, but not really different. In fact, I clean up my catalyzed lacquer with my cheaper solvent, which is lacquer thinner. Um, the uh, needle nozzle size should be the same. Uh, so there's really there, there's really no no big deal uh, with uh, with doing it. Uh, for uh, if I were just uh, uh, you know if I'd been spraying lacquer and I wanted to use uh, catalyzed urethane with it. I would just clean it really well with lacquer thinner, mm -hmm. uh, wipe it down, and then go ahead and uh, 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 spray your catalyzed urethane. The main thing with catalyzed urethane is that it will, you know, harden. After, it has a pot life, so it will start to react, and then it, it it won't form a really hard solid. It will be kind of a jelly. So uh, if you forget to clean your gun, you can still clean it. But you want to clean that gun really well afterwards. Now, what I do and what we'll show in the class next week is when I'm spraying urethane, I uh, take my gun apart only in the respect that I, I take the nozzle out, I take the needle out, and I take the air cap off, and I just dump it in a big tub with some lacquer thinner in it, and I just let it soak there overnight, right. and boom. And then I wipe everything else down. Uh, take some brushes and clean up the passages of the of the gun, mm -hmm. and I'm good. It, it's a it's really you know uh, not a no brainer. Now when we sprayed nitro, I mean back in the day, I mean you can pretty much just hang your gun up at the end of the day and yeah. you know put more nitro in it the next day, and the new stuff redissolves the old stuff, and off you go. But um, you just have to be a little bit more uh, diligent, I want to say, about cleanup with catalyzed urethane. Jeff, you mentioned uh, needle size. Do you have a particular favorite needle size you use in your guns? In a gravity gun, I usually use a 1.4, uh, but you can get away with anywhere between 1.3 to maybe a 1.5, 1.6. Uh, it really depends on how much thinner you add to the finish. As you add more thinner, uh, a lower viscosity will require a smaller tip typically. Uh, higher viscosity with less thinner uh, requires usually a larger needle nozzle setup. If you have a turbine driven gun, which is a pressurized cup gun, you want to be somewhere between 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and 1.1 millimeter uh, okay. for most lacquer and urethane finishes. Okay. I'm not a big fan of the pressurized guns uh, for spraying guitars. Uh, they're a little bit harder to finesse and control the pattern. Uh, but, you know, if you do have a turbine system, you know, uh, you know, just get the right needle nozzle set for it. That's all. 
Okay. Speaking of spray guns, do you still offer your spray guns uh, that you sell to luthiers, you know, specifically set up for luthiers? I do. Uh, we do uh, have a uh, deal going on right now with LMI. Uh, mm -hmm. They do uh, 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 carry a spray gun luthier kit that we make specifically for luthery. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to bring stuff in from Taiwan these days mm -hmm. uh, because the logistics, uh, the cost of freight and logistics, the whole package is pretty much quadrupled. So uh, to give this, you know, a real time figure, uh, I used to pay maybe seven, about seven or 800 bucks a couple years ago to get two pallets in. Mm -hmm. Now I have to pay about 2,500. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. And uh, it, it's, it, it's very difficult right now, but uh, so I, I, yeah, we, we, we do have some stock here, uh, which, uh, but uh, we pretty much, you know, I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, it, it, it's kind of a tough business right now to bring in uh, any imports from overseas, particularly Asia. Yeah, but LMI still carries the the Luther gun package, then, huh? They do have stock. Yeah, they they bought about twenty of them uh, a, a while back, and I, I I think they still have some stock. Um, Perfect. As long as Megan Wells doesn't get on the internet and uh, start <laughs> talking about it, uh, um, I'm on a live stream, uh, so. Uh, uh, I'm talking to my employee uh, right now. So, oh, perfect. Uh, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, we well, it's already almost 10 till, and I usually try and keep these things around an hour. So let's see if we can get through just a few more questions let's here. Let's some more questions. And then we'll do a quick giveaway, and then uh, sayonara. Here's a question from Steve. Can you use an airbrush to apply the finish? I've never really had a lot of success with airbrushes. Uh, they tend, for me, they tend to be finicky. They clog a lot. Uh but that said, uh, I have used an airbrush to apply an entire finish. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. uh, I know of a lot of people that do uh, sunbursts with them on smaller instruments like mandolins and things like that. But uh, right. I'm not a big fan of airbrushes. Uh, they, they tend to be finicky. And I don't know. I just I'm always fighting them, it seems. I prefer the small little detail guns. And you can get like a Stumac small detail gun, which I own like two or three of them. I think they're about 50 bucks and they work just fine. Okay, good. All right, here comes a question about trans tents. Something that you're very familiar with there, Jeff. Can trans tent stains be added to urethane for sunburst? We don't necessarily recommend that because uh, most urethane finishes and what we call catalyzed finishes uh, may not tolerate a colorant uh, being added to them properly. Uh, you can do it uh, in a pinch, but what I do to get around that, and I've been doing this for 25 years, is we'll get our base coats of everything down, you know, the sealer system, whatever you're going to be using, we'll get that down. And then I just use the sunburst medium that I use for lacquer, which is one part gloss lacquer, nitrocellulose lacquer, two parts thinner. And then I spray that. I allow it to dry normally, and then I spray the urethane right over that. I've never had an adhesion problem or an issue. That said, uh, if you don't want to do that, um, there are some reducers you can buy, some single component reducers. They're sold in the automotive industry for that, but um, they tend to be really expensive. Uh, so I just use lacquer. Okay. Here's another question from uh, Bo. How do you recommend spraying color slash sunburst under urethane? I think you just answered that. One third nitro, thinner I mix. Did. Yep. Yeah, well, that's good. I'd, I'd cut back a little bit on the thinner and go one to two nitro to thinner. I wouldn't go three parts thinner. Uh, uh, that much thinner uh, tends to sometimes have an adverse reaction with the trans tint and you can get little black specks in it. So, uh, but actually, Bose guitars may actually look better with little black specks in them. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Here's, yeah. <laughs> Here's another question. Hey, Jeff, what causes the appearance of pinholes in a lacquer finish? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, it is a good finish. Uh, it could be uh, not a very good quality lacquer thinner being used. Uh, most cases, though, what, what is causing that? is the finish that's underneath your last applied finish is still trying to cure and it's off gassing and the solvents as they evaporate cause little pinholes in them. 
Um, I would possibly look at changing your thinner or maybe extending your time between coats. Um, also, don't spray too heavy a coat. You may be spraying too heavy a coat. Uh, right. You want to keep your coats, you know, light. Um, and if it still keeps happening, uh, I would probably look at uh, changing your thinner. Perfect. All right. Here comes another question from Alexander. And I, Jeff, is the original Royal Lac as hard as the cat version? And is it? And if it is, I guess I should just French polish it, right? And can I use an airbrush to spray a guitar? Airbrush, we've already answered that question. So what do you think about the, the Royal Lac question? Um, I'm not really familiar really well with uh, Royal Lac, but the catalyzed version of Royal Lac is simply, all it is, it's a shellac base. It, it's a base of shellac resin to which a finish resin is added that is capable of being catalyzed. Usually it's the same type of resin system as you would find in a catalyzed lacquer or catalyzed urethane. Uh, I'm basing that on what the chemistry of the catalyst is for Royal Lac or the catalyzed version. Um, no, the, uh, the catalyzed version should be a lot more durable. I don't know if that can be French polished. I know the original version can be French polished. I've never really? done it, but I think Robbie's done it. Yeah, I've, I've um, French polished the original version. And according to VJ, the manufacturer, the post-cat version is formulated for spraying. It's not formulated to be the yes, French version. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. Glenn. Hi, Robbie and Jeff. Any advice on avoiding witness lines when sanding back catalyzed urethane finishes? I can only brush on what's available in the UK. Cheers. Yeah, my advice is don't sand through layers. <laughs> my advice is to apply uh, enough coats within a certain application window. Yep. Uh, catalyzed urethane finishes uh, will have a certain amount of burn-in, we'll call it, if they're applied within a time frame. So if you say, for example, my typical urethane finishing schedule takes place over two days. Mm -hmm. The first day I spray three to four coats, one hour apart. When you go to sand those, you won't get any witness lines. Right. And then the next day I will sand, a flat sand that so the surface is completely flat, impeccable, no pinholes, no nothing. And then I'll apply my last three coats of urethane. And usually that's enough so that I don't get any uh, witness lines. Uh, now, I've never tried to brush on those types of finishes, so uh, I don't know. But I think if you apply them within a certain time frame, you shouldn't get witness lines. Yeah, I used to brush catalyzed finishes on in my studio apartment in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That's I didn't have access to spraying. And so uh, that's the way I did my original finishes. It left a lot to be desired. It is possible to brush them. In fact, a lot of the Brazilian luthiers that I know to this day, the first coat, they will brush. So in case there was any pores that didn't quite get filled, it helps get down into you know, any little imperfections. They'll brush the first coat and, pray, and spray the, the other coats. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. But we have a product called Glue Boost now, which does a really good job of filling imperfections. Yep. Here's one from Gil. After drop filling lacquer in a spruce top for a small chip, how long do I let the lacquer dry to allow it to gas off before leveling out? It all depends on how much of a hurry you're in. Um, I've done it after a day, but it will continue to shrink yep. uh, and shrink and shrink as time goes on. Um, if there's no time uh, 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 requirement on that, I try to let it cure as long as possible, a week maybe, uh, maybe a, a little longer. Uh, but the, the, the sad reality of lacquer drop fills is that there will be, if they're pretty big, th th there will be some shrinkage that you will see six months down the road, eight months or a year. It's just the way it is. Yep. Here comes a question from Kenneth again. Can you comment on the final steps of finishing, buffing? And actually, Jeff has a great course on that called Level, Level yeah. Wet Sanding and Buffing. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, a lot of it depends on the type of finish that you're buffing. Um, my advice is um, if it's a nitrocellulose lacquer finish, I would wait a minimum of four weeks before going to the final stages of it. You can always level sand it before then. Um, 
if it's like a water-based finish about the same time, if it's a uh, urethane finish in my shop, we only wait about five to seven days uh, before doing the uh, final complete uh, level sand, buff out, uh, uh, rub out and uh, buff out. But uh, generally, uh, yeah, it really depends on the finish. Uh, so your non-catalyzed finishes, probably four, five, six weeks, I would wait. Uh, the catalyzed finishes, you can do a lot quicker. All right. Do you use the 3M PPS system? That's a great question. I do, and I love it, and I heartily recommend it, uh, particularly for <laughs> the, your, any catalyzed finish, because it's a lot easier to uh, ruin a PPS cup. And and now when I when I say the PPS system, I'm talking about the whole system where you use the PPS gun, which is called the sun gun, right. with the disposable heads mm -hmm. or the atomizing heads and the disposable cups. I use the whole system and I love it. In fact, we'll be bringing them and showing them in, in the class next week. Yep. And uh, somebody says he's looking forward to the class next week. So I must be one of our students signed up for the class. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. We're happy to see you. All right, let's grab one more question. Then we'll do a quick drawing and then uh, we'll have to say over and out because Jeff and I have to get ready to go to Indiana. Here we go. Should That's I be awesome. aware of crackling finish with urethane like nitro lacquer? How do you avoid crackling a nitro finish? I don't know at what point you're talking about the crackling, but one of the reasons I moved to urethane from lacquer was that six months and a year afterwards, I was noticing some big fissures and cracks opening up in my lacquer finishes. Um, I don't have the problem with urethane and cracking or crackling finishes. Uh, I would say the only time I've ever had a problem with a urethane finish, it's where the wood underneath is actually uh, cracked. Right. Uh, and that will crack the finish or split the finish. So um, finishing the inside of the instrument has pretty much seems to have uh, uh, addressed that issue for me. But I don't see the, the, the big uh, cracking or crackling or fissures uh, with urethane that I, I used to get with lacquer. Okay. Well, Jeff, it's always a pleasure to have you on my live streams. And I'm sure that everybody else has enjoyed it. Let's give them a good round of applause here, folks. Come on, folks, do a little better. There we go. There we go. Jeff, I'm going to take you off screen just here for real quick, and I'm going to get okay. Cesar back on, and we're going to give away a urethane course. All right, so away goes Jeff. Enjoy your cup of coffee there. And here comes Cesar all the way down there in Cerquito, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Hey, you still awake. How you doing, Cesar? <laughs> doing fine. <laughs> so this round we have 47 participants. 47. That's good. 47. Yeah, all right. That's a great so let's go ahead and do so it. I'm ready to Yep, go ahead and get that up there so we can see it. And let's see who's going to be the lucky winner here. 21. All right. Let's see if I can bring up who's the number one here. Here he is. Gary Redmond. Redmond. Richmond? I can't read it. Does it say Redmond? Redmond. Good. Redmond. That sounded like, God, was that you that said that? Somebody said Redmond. <laughs> I think that was Jeff. Yeah, Even though Jeff yes, is off I screen. Am God. I am God today. <laughs> Even though Jeff is off screen, there he is coming back on. We can still hear him. All right. All right. So um, thank you very much, everybody. Go ahead. Very quickly, Robbie, if there's a question that we didn't get answered, text it to Robbie and then he'll forward it to me and I'll answer it. Okay. Uh, also, if you did not win one of Jeff's courses today, everybody here is a winner. So just uh, use the promo code Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, uh, when you sign out on Luthery Academy, when you check out on the uh, Luthery Academy website, and you'll get 10% off the urethane course. Uh, all of those that are going to be in Indiana next week, we're looking forward to seeing your guitars and uh, doing some finishes. So thank you again very much, Jeff. And over and out, we'll see everybody next time. Oh, Jeff's got a guitar. What is that? Guitar. That's the guitar we'll be finishing next week. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yep. This is the new redesigned double O JJ model. Lovely. Looking forward to seeing that. Okay. All right, folks, over and out. Thank you very much for participating. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Brien Guitars channel and also, uh, you know, get some products and services from our sponsors.
Thanks, everybody.